Toys, we're going to be taking a look at G.I. Joe Classified Series, Cobra Island, Cobra Viper. Here we are, finally got him. I never thought I would ever find Cobra Viper out in the wild. I must have just walked in, Toys R Us, right at the right time. But here we are, it looks pretty interesting. He is indeed pretty cool. So I'm curious how good he actually is once I get him out of this package. But first, we're going to take our he-Man sword as usual, and we're going to take him, and we're going to look at the package and see exactly what's going on here. So, as we look at the top of the blister package here, you can see that it is ages four and up. We got our warning choking hazards, warning sign going on there as we flip him down. You can see that he is indeed number 22 in the wave, and or in the line, I should say, not the wave. And, of course, we've got the Cobra logo going on here. As we look forward ahead, you can see him in that nice package going on here. And, of course, he's got his accessories that we're going to take a look later on. As we look on down here, we can see that nice piece of art going on. Now, I really like this piece of art. It's pretty cool. I like that. And, of course, we've got our Cobra Island logo going on here. Classified series, Cobra Viper, it says. And, of course... Our Hasbro logo over here in the bottom right corner, made by the folks of Hasbro. As we look on the side, we get another nice piece of art going on here with multiple Vipers, because of course this is an army builder, so you can buy multiple ones if you wish, if you can manage to get a hold of them. On our back side here, we've got our Cobra Island. Pretty interesting going on there. And... We flip to the other side, and of course we've got these insignias going on here. And if you want to know what these mean, just go on Hasbro.com, and you can look it up, and you'll sh it'll show his stats as well as his bio. And of course, down at the bottom there, it is indeed number 22. So we look at the bottom, just some barcode mumbo-jumbo. And there you have it, guys. There is the packager. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty excited. Now, I will say this time and time again. Anybody that watches my videos knows I'm going to say this. I like these packages because you can take them out, you can put them on display, and then if you decide you want to put them back in, you can certainly do that because they get the blister package in the back, and they open up just like a box. So keep your packages because they look really nice. I absolutely love the G.I. Joe classified packages. Anywho, that's enough talking about the packages, guy. Let's go ahead. Let's get them out. Let's see what the Viper's all about, because I haven't... I, it's the first time I've been able to get my hands on one, so I'm excited. Let's get them out of the package, see what's going on. I'll be right back, guys. Here we are, taking a look at Cobra Viper. Cobra Island Viper. Now, this is pretty cool. First impressions, I like it. He holds up to the expectations, which I expected him to be. I really like his sculpt, but we're going to go ahead, we're going to dive right in, and we're going to take a look. So, as we start off as usual, with the helmet here on top, we can see he's got a nice visor. It's got like a, it's almost like a metallic, shiny type of wash going on there. It's in a silver color, it's really nicely done. Got a little bit of an overwash going on with the red there, but it's 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 very minor. It's not too big, too big of a deal going on there. And of course, it looks like he's indeed sculpted in a blue. I can go ahead and pop his head off here. And surprisingly enough, his is very easy to get off. And it is indeed sculpted in a blue plastic. And it's got painted uh, details going on the sides there. It looks pretty good. And of course, his neck is done in a um, skin tone plastic. Looks really good. We get down to his little collar or his shirt underneath. It's red. And of course, the blue. And this vest piece is definitely a separate piece going on here. This is definitely different. This is kind of loose. Uh, well, I shouldn't say loose. It's tight, but it is definitely a separate piece. So if you really wanted to get this piece off, you'd probably have to take off his arms, his head, and everything else to get the vest off. I'm sure someone out there has already done it. As we look at the left-hand corner there, we can see the Cobra logo. Looks pretty good. Looks like he's got some sculpted sculpted 
grenades. They look like frag grenades or smoke grenades or something like that there. It looks pretty good there. Got the red stripe kind of going all the way over to the back there. And of course, he's got the hole in the center for his accessory. And at the back of the helmet, he's got some gray and it's sculpted. It's got some, it's got a nice pattern going on there. Looks pretty good. Get down to the arm bracers here. It is done in a black plastic and looks like it was painted red. And it's got a nice detail going on here as well. And the hand on this side is a little different. It's kind of a half trigger hand and um, half knot because this one here on this side is more of a trigger finger for sure so it looks just slightly different not too much different but when you put the weapons in the hand and his accessories in his hand you'll you'll notice exactly what i mean got some the uh pockets going around the belt going on there looks pretty good another cobra logo symbol going there and as you can tell this is a separate piece you can kind of see up underneath there pants are sculpted in a blue with red paint it's got patterns on it just like you would expect to see on their on most of the gi joe classified pants that same pattern going on there at least down to the thigh cut and then this piece here feels like it's a separate piece altogether it just feels weird it's different and then he's got the knee pad and then of course he's got the nice boots they're sculpted really nice and black on the bottom there See the peg hole? He's got that on both feet, of course. And that's pretty much a rundown of his skull, which is pretty good, pretty decent. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to check out the articulation here. So his head is rotating on a ball joint, of course, as we've seen earlier. He can look down pretty well. He can look up. Eh, okay, not exactly too much because, of course, the back of the helmet is hindering the articulation to look up. So you're not going to get a whole lot of that going on there, but otherwise it's pretty good. Arms can go straight on out, right at that 90 degree angle. And of course you can swivel it there at the uh, joints at there at the top, and then the bicep swivel. And of course the double elbow joint, absolutely love it. It can go pretty well, and you can rotate at the wrist of course, and of course the hands do fall out. And, of course, they bend and they hinge as well. So, inwards and backwards. It's pretty good. Now, I believe he does have a crunch in there. I can't exactly see it, but I can feel it that he does indeed have one. And I believe, yep, you can rotate him at the waist as well. Now, one thing I noticed that was kind of interesting about this character is when I take this hand off, if I can manage to get it off again, I found this one was a little tight. There we have it. Uh, this little bracer pieces, these are separate, so this can come off. Like, you can pull that off. I don't know if I'll get it a second time, but I had it off there. There we go. You can pull that right on off there, and you can see underneath it's sculpted with, like, a watch, and, of course, uh, skin tone for his, uh, forearm there. It looks pretty good. I like that. I like that you can actually take these off, so it's almost like they're an accessory. Almost like a hidden accessory. Pretty sharp. I think I managed to get that back in there. There we go. And I found it very easy to get his head on. And um, it's not too bad. And, and it's actually nice and firm. So I like that when the head uh, can come off fairly easily. And it, But yeah, when you put it on, it stays very well. So of course at the leg. Now we're getting off track. You can do the splits. Force him down to do the splits. It looks pretty good there. Not bad at all. And of course, he can rotate there. And at the. I thought he rotates there at this cut here, but apparently not. Oh, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Okay, there we go. Mine was just a little tight. But you can do that. All right, right on. And double knee joint bend all the way back. Swivel at the boot cut, and of course rocker joint at the ankle, and forwards and backwards for the hinge. Just exactly what you would expect to see. Now this is a separate piece as well. This holster for his gun, and it's done in a black plastic there. It looks pretty good. And if you really opted to, you can definitely take that off his leg. So there you have it. It's got a hole through it. You can kind of see it there. Looks pretty good. Get that back up on the hip. 
lungs. So if you wanted to, you can kind of switch the hip on the uh, gun. So if you want to put the, if you if you army build these guys, you can put like one on this side if you wanted to, or something like that. So that would be kind of cool. So you got options there. Got some interesting options. I'd love to be able to afford to army build this guy, <laughs> but they're they're pricey as it is in the aftermarket. Of course, crazy as we all know it. So we're gonna go ahead. And we're going to do, oh, excuse me, guys, I'm getting some yawns going on here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do some accessories next. And he's got a fair amount of them. It's not bad at all. He's got exactly what you would expect one of these guys to get. So I'm all, all in all very happy with it. So here we have, we'll do his first one. And of course, it is the gray scarf there. Kind of like a scarf slash handkerchief you put around his neck. And of course, you can just... It's at, uh, you can just pull that back and go around his neck like so. so. It's pretty good there. It will go on and it will most definitely stay. It doesn't fall off, it doesn't hinder. And it's actually sculpted in such a way that it looks like it's form fitted for the vest. So it looks really cool. I really like that. It's pretty neat. And of course, it is done in a uh, gray plastic there. And next up, we'll do his goggles that you put on his visor or, or over his uh, helmet I should say now I don't know why you would want goggles over a helmet I don't know but I had a hard time getting it on at first but you really just got to work with it now I get it on there no problem I just you know it, it is kind of stretchy it's done in a black plastic and you can get it on there nice once you work with it and it will stay I was debating whether to put it back in the package when I put him on my display because I was worried that um, that I would lose it. But now that I got it over his helmet quite well, I think it'll be fine. I'm not too worried about it because I prefer to actually have the helmet or the uh, goggles on because that's how I know the Viper is with the goggles. So I like it that way. And of course, next up, we'll go ahead and we'll just do his book bag there. I like this. This is one of my favorite accessories because it's just, it's a nice thick plastic. It's what you would expect. Very typical of all the G.I. Joe classifieds, like, you know, gung-ho material, that, that type of quality plastic. Same idea. The only difference is this will actually stay. <laughs> this stays on his back. So he's got the hole there. And of course, you can just plug it on in. And I find his stays really well, unlike gung-ho. I find gung-ho, every time I put it on, it just falls out. Just drives me nuts. But this one will stay. So I like it. Well done. And of course, it's got the Cobra logo going on there. So it's all sculpted on. And it looks like there's some more grenades or smoke grenades, whatever they are, sculpted on there. Some pouches and some rope. Because every Viper needs some rope. In case you're going to infiltrate down a ceiling or something like that. Ninja style. So that looks pretty good there. And, of course, next up we'll do his, um, he's got a handgun going on here. Typical handgun. Now, I don't know if it's the same as Duke's or if it might be the same as the other characters. I actually forgot to actually check this to see if it is the same. I never even thought of it, but it could very well be. It is done in a black solid plastic there, and, of course, it will fit in this. I find it fits in this hand better than the other hand. It will go in both, though. Because this one has the real good trigger finger. And there you have it. It goes in quite well. It looks awesome. It's pretty sharp. And of course it will be holstered in his gun holster. If you want to put it in there it will go in. So that's pretty cool. And there you have it. There's his gun. Now I find this hand likes to pop out once in a while. I don't know why that is. It's not super loose or anything, it's just maybe the way I'm hitting it or something it tends to want to fall out. I don't really have any loose joints with him or anything, thankfully, so I'm very happy with that. And of course, last but not least, he has his assault rifle. And once again, I'm not sure if this is the same as Gung Ho's or not. I'm going to have to check this out afterwards. I don't have them handy to me, but I believe it could be. Uh, maybe you guys would know. I'm sure you guys will know anyway. If you guys collect this line, you will know for sure. Done in a black plastic. It looks pretty good there. Looks like it's got a scope on it. That's just um, molded on there. It looks pretty good. And of course, it goes in his hand. 
and I find it fits better in this hand, but I still have a hard time getting it in his hand. I, just the one thing, one gripe I will say about G.I. Joe Classifieds is sometimes, especially when it comes to these guns, it can be very tricky at first to get them in their hands, so you almost have to, with some of them, you kind of got to um, heat up the plastic first, I find. But he holds it nice and well, you know. Do the double hand thing going on there. You can I can get him to hold this piece too if I want to. So if I want an army build, I can have one holding the guns like this and whatnot. It looks pretty good. I like it. I'm very happy with it. All in all, once I get the gun in his hand, I don't really have any complaints. So I'm happy with that. Now, uh, one thing that I always do with the G.I. Joe Classifieds is can he hold all his weapons on his person without putting a single one in his hand? Can he do it? Let's find out. So, we got his book bag. It can indeed go on his back. His goggles go on his helmet, so that's check. You can take the gun, and it can go in his holster. Check. But, uh-oh, won't, won't, won't. New, new place to put this gun. <sighs> Darn, won't, won't, won't. Not gonna happen. So, you lose a point, Viper, for not being able to do that. Because I'm one of those people. It doesn't really... Um, hinder the character anyway, in any way, shape, or form. It's just something that I like to do. I actually like to keep my characters without putting the weapons in them. I like to be able to hold them on their, uh, you know, backpacks or whatever the case may be. And I don't think you're going to be able to do this because I thought about improvising. But, of course, it's not really optimal to do that. It doesn't look right and it doesn't really go all the way in anyway. And I'm sure that will indeed fall out. Uh, maybe I can get it there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, same deal, really. It's just not going to work, unfortunately. Sometimes you can improvise, but with him, it's not going to work. But that's fine. I will just sport him with the um, gun in his hand this time around. So that's fine. So all in all, it's a pretty cool character going on there. I just want to try to get this gun in his hand. Just so I don't have to do it later. Ooh, and there goes his hand popping out again. I find it's not really super loose, but if I even just put any type of effort on it whatsoever, the uh, gun will indeed pop out of his hand. And uh, God knows I'm not going to be able to get in his hand on camera, so I'm just trying to do this here. I guess I can just do it later because I'm not going to get it right now. Without... Uh, Getting angry. <laughs> and we don't want that. So I guess what we'll do now is we'll just go ahead and we'll do a quick comparison going on here. And we will go ahead and we will bring in our Cobra Commander. So here he is right up with the Commander going on there. So we got the Commander and we've got the Viper side by side. You can kind of see the similarities in the helmet there, but they are indeed sculpted slightly different, so it's not the exact same. But here is the front view. Here is our... If I can get Cobra to... Uh, Commander, Mr. Commander to stand up. Side view, and of course, we've got the back view. So there you have it, and they're within scale with one another. So that's pretty good. And there you have it. There is our... Cobra Viper, Cobra Island Viper. Uh, all in all, I am extremely happy with this character. I don't really have any issues with mine. I don't even really have any gripes. I, I literally am I'm, I'm looking for complaints, but I, I don't have any. Unfortunately, I just don't. So, it's uh, I guess that's a win-win for me. I absolutely love the character. I'm happy with him. He's definitely one of my top five favorite characters that have been released thus far. I hope you guys have been able to find him out there in the wild. He's been out for quite some time now. He's a great character all in all. So that is my final thoughts with Cobra Viper. I like that he's got those double joints. Uh, absolutely love that. I hope they just continue going this way going forward. And, you know, I love those goggles. I like the fact that you can take those bracers off. That's a bonus to me. So that's pretty cool. So there you have it, guys. There is Cobra Viper. Thanks for tuning in, and um, we're going to catch you on the next one. I'm going to head on out. So take care, guys. See you later.